first thing I want to say on this is it's very likely I get the guy's name wrong, um, Duterte. Um, it's basically the mayor, or I'm not sure if he's still the mayor in Davao because his daughter's been involved in so many terms you can run, etc. But it, they basically sorted, as a family, out Davao. I remember when there was the rice shortage um, a while back, the first thing he was looking to do in Davao was basically if you weren't using your land, for example, say you've got because you'll see it around the Philippines, a lot of land where people don't even know who owns it. Um, he would put it to farm farming use. Um, he's very, very strict, but at the same time, I think it's what the Philippines needs. This is where a lot of things sort of differ on in the world, but because a lot of people assume people are all on the same level. You know, because you won't litter, you assume other people will not litter. But we all know that's untrue, and I think this is a prime example where the Philippines needs a strong leader, but is also somebody that's very anti-corruption. I don't think he's going to be pushing the same way a lot of the pre his predecessors would be if he become president, um, purely because he seems more in line with wanting to improve the the country rather than taking it as a cash cow. Now, the reason I bring it up as well is there could be some issues with this coming up on the horizon if he does get power um, because those uh, people in the, uh, what do you call it? They, they, they call it the, basically the barrel. Um, I can't remember what they call it, the pig barrel or something. But the people basically in the trough of the government um, that benefit from all the corruption that goes on won't go quietly if he does actually gain power but at the same time is he going to have enough influence in the senate or whatever as one person that's where the big question is um so if he does become president i'm not sure we can change it that much even if we wanted to unless you went down the route of martial law um where you'd actually change the government itself because uh, obviously the problems are ingrained it's a bit like the uk you can't really make a change because they're all the same. Um, so, I mean, even getting into politics in the UK, they say, oh, it's about 24, 26,000 pounds or 34,000, I can't remember, to actually, you know, basically get your foot in the door by the risk of losing your money, etc. Which is why a lot of people go for the parties in the first place because the parties support them financially, blah, blah, blah. As such, everybody sits on the same uh, fence because they're just after it as a job it's a career move rather than actually an interest in politics um so the philippines is the same it's got a lot of stagnant people because they're they've got a lot of um regional influence in their own provinces etc where they own the businesses and you'll find you know somebody be same family could have a mayor a governor a senator and 101 other hang-ons from the same family all in government jobs and all sorts because i mean it's like if you research any of the families if you take the marcos family for example you'll be surprised how far the the family is involved in the philippines not just from the president presidential side but immigration all sorts so i do think this could be a change but i also think it could be quite a, quite a messy one for the short term um, if it does get to the point where they look to change the country um, because he he's also been known for dealing with the problems in Davao and uh, people have um, complained about death squads and that sort of thing of getting rid of the problems within Davao and obviously this would be taking it to a whole new level um, with being very, very anti-corruption and looking to change the country, not just one city. And the fact is that Davao seems a bit of a gem in the Philippines with its anti-crime, etc. At the same time, it didn't come um, easily. It was actually something that had to be forced. And in the world eye of um doing stuff via a uh, satellite or a webcam and stuff blowing things up is fine but when it gets to the nitty-gritty of somebody actually getting rid of the problem on the ground a lot of people don't like it 
and obviously this could have repercussions long term. So the reason I was thinking, you know, for a minute, from an expat's point of view, be aware. Firstly, the election time is not the time to be in the Philippines if you can help it, and if you are. Just stay away from all the political stuff because it can be risky for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. All right, thanks for watching.